What's good? It's Kelby Cannon, publisher of Making the Magazine, founder of the membership. It's your girl, Miss Primrose. That's Miss P-R-I-M-R-O-S-E. You already know, independent artist right here in Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Jersey. So we got some things to say. Okay, you from Jersey? Yeah, I'm from Jersey. Okay, there's a dope artist by the name of Abe from the Ave that I stumbled across. You said Abe? Abe from the Ave. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Abe from the Ave. Yeah, he got a nice project. I just, um, he, we discovered him through our music review. Oh yeah, Where so are you from? he's from Jersey. Oh. He's, yeah, yeah, he's um he's the number one artist on my Spotify recap. Hey, <laughs> you have to check out Abe from Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Yeah. So we're gonna have this industry conversation. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, tell what you actually do. Well, besides being an independent artist, I'm a curator of a. Indie Fresh Concert called Indie Fresh Concerts. It's for independent artists who are just breaking into the music industry, don't really know where to go, what to do, who to talk to. We basically bring a bunch of professionals who've been in their uh, field for um, umpteen amount of time and are successful. Success is relative, but you know, you still want to get connections with them. They can help you get to the next level in your career. And we bring them all into the same room put on a performance, um, you show out, show what you do, bring your best foot forward, and we connect, we connect the dots. So um, I'm an independent artist. I've known that it's been hard to get those dots connected. So by way of some of the relationships that I've built since being in this industry, I'm just trying to shuffle on in the next wave of independent artists who are serious about what they do. All right. Now, so I'll be on live. Um, Talking to artists. Yeah. I used to be an artist. Yeah. You told me about that. Yeah. Man. Like, it's like, you, it, sometimes it can be frustrating trying to help artists. Mm. And because, like, when you see things clearly, mm -hmm. it's like, sometimes you forget there yeah. was a time when you didn't. Yeah. yeah. And so having a lot of the conversations, I think, when um, we get in these rooms as um, professionals, like, yeah. dealing with, like, a lot of. Uh, managers and engineers and executives um, it's kind of like an echo chamber because we get things from a different perspective often than the artists and so like that's one of the things that I try to do with the magazine with our platform is getting the conversation to cross the lines yeah. between the creatives and the professionals between the generations between uh, people in from different cultures, different genres, because like that's where the the truth exists in the middle, mm -hmm. and so it's like there's these extremes, and so often we we get on our sides and we get go to our extremes, and so that's why I try to try to foster a dialogue. And so Jeremiah, understanding that, that's why he introduced us because um, he was telling me some of the stuff that you have going on, and you've been more in that artist space right now felt it would be good for us to get together and have some of that dialogue, those conversations, because often when I do the conversations on live, there isn't, there's not always an artist to ask the questions that need to be asked in the live. Yeah. And so to make it more of a dialogue. So, um, so that's what we, what we're doing here today. Yep. So um, as a creative, as an artist, I guess the uh, a good thing to start off with is what do you think like what is that the, the number one question that someone you know looking to get started or into the music industry is asking? Well, I think a lot of independent artists, um, including myself, when I first started in the industry, because I didn't really know where to go. I knew a lot of people, mm -hmm. but I didn't know where to start. So that hot topic question, which we sometimes ask and sometimes fail to ask is, well, where do you start? You know, like, where do you, what do you do? Do I jump in the booth first? Do I, you know, go pay for uh, marketing for whatever hoopla? Do I make a logo? Do I set up an LLC? What do you do first? You know, where do we even go? And that's a hot question that I know I even had. Um, I was blessed to have some people around me to help guide me down that path, but not a lot of people do. So, that's a question that I feel like somebody like you, who, like you said, you've been an artist, you've been in that space, you've been in the industry, you've helped so many other artists foster and get to the next level. So that's a question that we would ask um, somebody old school like you. Okay. So 
old school person like myself would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's like a valid question. Like uh, the I often hear is like, how do you get in the industry? Like how to how do you get in? How do you get started? And um like when I hear that question, like I used to do these workshops and like the the first half of it was just defining the words that we use. And I think um like uh and I would probably have to look up the what is the definition of industry? I want to get the Webster. That'd be good. I had my phone a second ago. Let's see. Let's see if you can definition of industry. Industry. Because I believe it's like a collection of activities or businesses and services that surround a, a specific thing. So economic activity concerned with the processing of raw materials and manufacturing of good. And fa- okay, hold on. Maybe. There's probably a second one on it, too. Uh, the second one says hard work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that <laughs> that's about right. Uh, what else we got? Uh, okay. What is an industry? An industry is a group of companies that are related based on their primary business activities. In modern economies, these are dozens of industries, classifications. Uh, and and that's really, like, if you look at that, that's what it. That's what the industry, we refer to the, the industry, industry as the music yeah. industry. Yeah. So what does it take to get into the music industry? Which is a group of companies that are related based on their primary business activities, which is music. Right. So, yeah. So it's is, very easy yeah, to get in the music simple. industry. So, but what what I tend to find is as an independent, it's a psychological thing. Mm-hmm. And people look at the music industry as this city, shining city on a mm-hmm. hill. Something like they, they got to travel to get to. Got to follow the yellow a, road to get to exactly, it somehow. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but here's the thing. It's. It's very simple. Like I would, when I used to do my workshops, like, yo, press up some CDs, sell them, mm-hmm. sell some merch, mm-hmm. put your stuff. Like, it's like once you make a dollar yep. doing music, you are technically in the industry. Yeah. Like once you, once you form your business and put things in place to make money, like, and that's the thing is people want to get in the industry and then I'll talk to them and they don't have any plans on making money it's everything is about getting streams getting visibility getting exposure Mm -hmm. and the the target is never financial and that's where i think our downfall is because a lot of independent artists think you're going to get rich off of making music and it's going to boom you're going to have the hottest single and boom you take off from there and i one point in time thought that was true too Quickly found out that that was a lie. <laughs> like right. You, it does not work like that. Like the the success stories you saw, like um, what's her name? Glorilla. Yeah. The newest success story that seemingly made one song mm. and somebody found her and it was just the biggest thing and she blew up and now her life is totally different. But what people don't see on the backside is Glorilla have been making music and have been making strides in the music industry and making money in other ways in the industry before she actually made that single that made her a hit wonder, you know, Um, or what it seemed like a one hit wonder. But um, even myself, like I said, I thought it was the same thing, but what I quickly came to learn was that you have to, one, they say you have to, uh, what you put out is what you're gonna get back. Mm -hmm. So you have to give before you can take. So for me, it came in a form of creating the Indie Fresh concerts, which, was is a platform for other independent artists to be seen and be heard. Yeah, I want to be seen and be heard too, but if I can only help myself or if I'm only trying to help myself, that's going to go but so far because it takes a lot of people around you to make that that uh make that thing shake, you know, for you to move forward. So, um indie the indie fresh concerts was my way of going forward with that, but a lot of other independent artists think that you just got to make music and it's got to be that one dope one that's going to pop off. And that's not necessarily true. So. Well, and I guess that goes to an interesting thing. Let's say Lorilla hadn't been doing music. Mm -hmm. That someone did just miraculously just find her her and her whole life changed. Mm -hmm. And And that's possible. It's possible. Because it has happened. And, And I think that's the, that's really the problem. And it was like, it took me, Almost three years to write a cover story, like because it was like I had a, a idea, but I couldn't put it into words. Mm-hmm. And it's this difference between possibility and probability. Mm-hmm. And um, we we use these words so interchangeably 
And like, technically anything's possible. Yeah. Like all of the atoms necessary to create your iPhone could randomly come together yeah. and materialize. It's possible, it's possible. technically. It's like mathematically possible. <laughs> Yeah. What is the probability of that happening? Right. No. And mm-hmm. and that's the thing. Sometimes. And so that's the that's the thing. It's like um the, the math ain't mathin'. Math ain't mathin'. <laughs> but but here's the thing is we love a good story. Mm-hmm. And so it's like with anything it's selection bias. Mm-hmm. We're gonna pick the good story to tell. Like you've had a bunch of boring days you've had a bunch of you graduated college i did right you tell stories about college like things that y'all did when Mm -hmm. like you repeat the same stories over and over there are plenty of days that weren't story worthy right didn't make it to the print and so you if someone just makes their decision on what college to go to based off of your stories like you've told them all the The highlights the highlights everybody's feed the highlights mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so it's it's that selection bias so when you hear of someone that seemingly made it out of nowhere that's the story that gets repeated so everybody uses the exception to disprove the rule so what you're saying is um back to the question how do you get your start a lot of it comes from it can come from the story that you tell how well of a storyteller you are when you're telling your story, whether it be through the music or even in, if you're sitting in an interview and you're just talking to somebody, that story that you continually tell them on how you got to where you are or where you started or how you want to start, even if you haven't started yet, you know, you can still tell a story before you start. Mm-hmm. And, and that can help build your. Well, I'll say this. This is true. Mm-hmm. So, but I guess the point that I was making relating to this it's the story that we tell the independents that puts them in this mental place mm-hmm. where the industry becomes a city on a hill uh, okay. instead of something that's attainable and right next to them. Yeah. And so as long as I have you thinking that's that so far that, yeah, that it's like, it's, it's in pot, not you, you couldn't be you like, it's like, and you don't, you don't realize the power. It, it is, it literally is the wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. She had the power the whole time. Mm-hmm. All she had to do was click her heels. Right. She didn't have to do all of that stuff to get to the city, to be told that you got to go over here and then go kill the witch and Literally. the flying monkey. None of that. No, no, no. Like you could have just clicked your heels at any point in time been home, and right? been home. <laughs> and like, and that's that's the power that independent artists give away. Yeah, essentially, they they give that power away because you're right. It's what we've seen on TV, what the media has told us. Like, oh, you have to live like this, and you have to look like this, and you have to have this in order to be here. But how did you get there? Because nobody was just born and was there already. They mm-hmm. had to somehow get there too. But it was their belief system. Even though you said, you know, possibility, because uh, one of my favorite uh, motivational speakers, Les Brown, he talks about it's possible. He's always mm-hmm. telling you it's possible. And so, like, I believe anything is possible. Right. I, I live off of that. Like, oh, no, it can happen. It's possible. But that probability piece, sometimes we do often forget like okay but how probable is that to happen especially if you don't put the things in place the plans of action in the place which is another thing that um, independent artists we don't really if you don't know you don't really plan very much and that's that's poor planning um, piss poor planning prevents hold on prior planning prevents piss poor performance performance. correct (laughs) so a lot of us don't plan very well. And, and then we wonder why, oh, we're not moving and we're not going anywhere. Nobody can see our stuff and our marketing isn't working. It's because our plans aren't really, you know, polished. And, and look, 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 at the, look at the use of alliteration. Right. Look at it right. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but that goes back to the possibility and the probability. Because I believe possibility is the enemy of probability. Because possibility is a binary. Either it's possible or it or isn't. Right. But probability deals with math. And so there are factors to making something more or less probable. probable. Mm-hmm. So it's possible you could win the lottery. It's possible. Right? Um, but you don't have much probability that you can change other than buying more tickets. Right. And so it's like when you realize that, okay, it isn't like what how can I make this more probable, then you find the ways that you can impact your outcome. And so 
it's like a, a thing um, like we used to do like in school. Like I'm going to give you a math problem yeah. and I'm going to give you 10 numbers and I want you to multiply them and give me the answer. All right. Two mm -hmm. times four mm -hmm. times eight times one times seven times 12 times 32 times eight times 72 times zero. The last thing I said was time zero. Oh, so it's all zero. <laughs> <laughs> so see, that's and that's how this thing works. Everything is a factor. We use the word factor all the time. That's what multiplication is. Factors. It's about the, the product that these two things produce. So if any of your factors is at zero, you get nothing. So no matter how talented you are, like it's money, talent, time, networking, effort. Like all of these are the things that will make you successful in the music Every industry. Time, time, networking, and effort. But any of those is a zero. It doesn't matter how great you at all at any of those things. How much money you got? How much connections you got? If you're an asshole, zero. And so it's like you can do all of these different things, and it's like when you realize that while it is possible, I got to look at. What are the factors that make it more or less probable for me to get the outcome that I'm looking for? So you need that balance. Yeah. A good balance between all of that. And it's like, and it doesn't even have to be a zero or one, like the difference. Like you can have someone and y'all evenly matched on everything. They're, you're as talented as them. You have the, the, um, the work ethic as them. You have the, the, the money as them, but then they have the network. They win. And so it's like, as artists and creatives, too often get caught up in comparing just your music, yeah. comparing just the things that you see and not putting enough uh, appreciation in the invisible assets that people have, which are even mind state, the way that they look at things, attitude, those, those are all things. Teachability is. Because that's a huge factor. I'm even finding with a lot of artists who've been doing this for a lot longer than me, it's just they won't change. Mm -hmm. They they stick to what they know and they think one day it's gonna work, but. Possibility does that. Possibility. Because no matter how effed up their attitude or things, because it's still possible, mm -hmm. even though you're making it less and less probable, it's like hitting the jackpot in the lottery. Right. As that first number comes, you know, mm -hmm. well, I'm not hitting the jackpot. Maybe I'll get the next five. Right. <laughs> like, maybe I'll get 100000 Like, you get to see your your odds dwindle oh, and what your payout is going to be. But if you just had to hit one number, <laughs> it's like, all right, maybe I'll still. Yeah. <laughs> and so you continue. And that's the thing. It's like kind of a, this, I call it toxic positivity. It's like we we say the things that make people feel better. Positivity. Yeah. It's like you're going to like a lot of the social media posts and a lot of the even the the people selling people on a lifestyle. Yeah. Like that's Instagram. that's the new economy. Basically. Yeah. Because you only post the highlights. You only post the stuff that looks good. Like you say, all the other days that are down, nobody see that. Yeah. yeah. And so that's where when we come to like, yo, I'm trying to get into the industry. It's like it, it requires a mindset shift. Like I would do a whole workshop just based around that concept is um, it's like you hear people say, like I, I was just having this conversation about Russ. I think Russ is a huge offender of this. He says what y'all want to hear and it's not good. And it's like you don't need a label. And a record label is just a company that is set up to exploit um, the masters. So you create masters, you record songs, uh -huh. you have wave files, you have masters. Yep. You, you want masters. to exploit them. 
you want to get as much out of them as possible. But that here's the thing, like on your masters, what good is a master if it's not worth anything? No good. So it's just like if a company through their exploitation creates value in something, it's like you want a hundred percent of zero or ten percent of a hundred. And so, like, that's the thing where um, this, this, like, we, I think we, I'm pro artist to the extent that I have to be pro label. Because understanding that in this vacuum, this is why I, I care about mental health. Okay. And so, if I'm telling you it's possible without the, the realistic, um, expectations uh, and talking about the probability, like, yeah, you could just wind up with a million dollars in your bank account because you made a song. But how probable is that from you just uploading it to SoundCloud? So at some point, you're going to have to spend some money. Mm -hmm. And for tax benefits, you might want to create an LLC mm -hmm. and you're going to have to network and you're going to have to do all of these things. Spend money on marketing. Something. And so now you're a label. Yep. Which is what the label does. Which <laughs> so, so you <laughs> And so rest of the time people they don't need a label? Like it's a it's a lot of people that tell uh, like you don't need a label, you do everything yourself. And I was like, That's then you become work. then you become an artist complain about wearing all the hats yeah. that they chose work. to put on. <sighs> and so it's like when we give out this advice of, ah, oh, you can do this yourself, you can do that yourself, you don't gotta pay for that, you ain't gotta pay for that. And then your your thing, oh, I'm so burnt out. I'm doing everything by myself. And it's because we've been told that the label is going to rob you. They're going to strip you of everything that you you own, and you're not going to have anything. They're going to work you. And so, like, um, I think it artists was, do that too. Yeah, artists will do that too. Artists artists have a bigger track record of doing that to to labels. Hmm. Because here's the thing: the people who tell those stories are yeah. artists, right. and they're people. So we care about people. Right. We don't care about companies, right? Here's they make a, all the money. If, if you think about this, the old music industry model was this. They would invest all of this money for 10% of the artists to be successful, right? So, But they made enough money off the 10% who were successful to cover all the of the losers mm -hmm. and be profitable. Yeah. So now that means that if I sign 10 artists, we make buku money, mm -hmm. and I've taken a lion's share, right? And, of course, out of those 10 artists, right, that were successful, mm -hmm. then some of them are going to feel like, you're making too much money off of me. Yeah. And, and you can say that, yo, look at, point to them as an example. Look at how much money you made off of them. No one looks at the 90 that the I negative. signed right. and lost all the money the on. Negative. No one cares about that. No one, no one asks, how do you keep the lights on? And how do you pay all these people in the marketing so department? Those <laughs> negatives are the ones that'll go and tell you you don't need a label. No, the it the negatives, they you don't even hear from them because they failed. Uh, and yet, like y'all don't respect someone who failed. Like it's like it's like you one hit wonder yeah. and everything. Like, <laughs> Get out of here. What you gonna tell me? What can you tell me? <laughs> it's it's those. It's the ones who are super successful. Your uh, Taylor Swifts, okay. your Kanye's, your yeah. people, your anyone who's who was successful, and then they'll talk about how unfair the deal was. Your Macy's, hmm. like all of the people who, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the label gave you relevancy. Yeah. So it wasn't until like um, someone put the money into your career that your career was worth something because, like. There's there are two artists, the one you sign and the one they become. So th the one that you signed was like whatever you signed them for, they were appreciative of it mm -hmm. because it was like because they knew like yo, this is I'm better gonna, than what I got. Right. Like it's better than what I had. But here's the thing: once they once they're successful, then they're a new new person. New person. It, it's it's like them oh, after what well, money came by you love. With yeah. Nick Cannon, yeah. where he he's feeling himself now, love like don't cost a thing. No, love don't cost a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so like that's that's the thing is like once you once you smelling yourself, you feeling yourself. Mm -hmm. That did like whole you new person. whole new person. Sixty, I got it now. I yeah, no more. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly and so I that's mean. why they had to come with the three sixty deal. Ah. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> wow. Now, but, but tell us about that because I hear a lot of bad 
stigmas about the, around the 360 deal. People saying, don't sign that. No, don't go for that. Right. I, <laughs> that's another good one. Because um, I feel like a deal, no deal is the same, pretty much. Um, because no two people sign it, even if the deal is the exactly the same. The people who are signing it are different. Mm -hmm. So, like, your fan base is different than this person's. The, the, the equity, sweat equity you put in is different. So, even if the, 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 the contract is the same, the deal is different. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, if, if, if for and just to put a fine point on that, if, uh, the Hawks signed LeBron James to play for them for $2 million a year. That's an incredible deal for the Hawks, right? Yeah. If they signed me to play for $2 million a year. Yeesh. Same contract. Yeesh. It was a come up for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Are the Hawks happy? Yeah, so, and so, we, so that's the thing. We, we, we talk about deals like they're the same. Like it's a one glove so, fits all. Yeah. Like, now, we can both say we have NBA contracts, mm -hmm. you feel me? But it's like that's kind of a umbrella for, like, what kind of deal. But the terms is always going to be different than the people. And so a 360 deal is basically the label wants to participate in all the money that's being made, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Yeah. And it's, it's a label. Yeah. I would, too. If, if, if I know that I don't make money selling CDs, but you doing tours and on all this, like. I want some of that. Yeah. Right. But that doesn't make sense to most people. And it's like when people say, I'd never sign a 360 deal, it's like, then you'll never sign a deal. Yeah, like, because right. that's all that's, that's what's being given right now. Yeah. Like hotcakes, 360 yeah. deals. And so. But, and I think what artists mm -hmm. forget about these 360 deals are that they can be negotiated. You mm -hmm. don't have to take what they give you because even up until recently, I didn't realize that myself. I was offered a distribution deal. But I didn't want to take it. However, I didn't know how to negotiate it in my favor or just a little bit something that would, you know, come back better for me. So instead of, you know, even negotiating, I just said, no, nah, I ain't going to take that. And that was a mishap on my part. Right. Because I probably would have came out a little bit better for something I didn't have to do now because I have somebody else doing it for me. But now, because I don't have somebody else doing it for me, I'm now wearing all the hats again and stretching myself thin and you got to do everything. <laughs> and, and that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to have to do everything as an independent artist. And I think a lot of us have that fake facade of a notion that we can do everything and that we should do everything because there have been some artists in the past that have done a lot of things, but nobody can do everything. I can. Nobody can do everything. Listen, I'm, I am, I am an anomaly amongst anomalies. Like you got certain people who can't do everything. And then some people are talented enough to do everything. Like I rap, record myself, mm -hmm. Do the cover art, do the manufacturing, I shoot video, I do all this stuff. And this is back then, marketing, business minded, all that. All right. Some people can do everything, but can't do everything well. Mm -hmm. Once again, anomaly amongst anomaly. Right. I could do everything pretty well. I wasn't the greatest at anything, like, but I could do it above or at an industry standard. Now, did you consider yourself successful in it? Oh. Yeah, I made money. Yeah. I made money. Right. I made good well, money. Hey. But here's the problem. Even if you could do everything and you could do everything well, here's where we all fall down. Mm -hmm. You can't do everything well at the same time. No. We are all constrained by time. Mm -hmm. And so whatever time I was spending recording, I wasn't spending marketing. Whatever right. time I was spending selling CDs, I wasn't spending recording. Right. Whatever... And so no matter what, it's what is it? You want to go fast, go alone. Mm -hmm. Want to go far, go with go others. Mm -hmm. And like, and that's the thing. And that's where like um, in my music career, like I didn't go as far as I could have went because for the most part, I went fast. Yeah. I went alone. You went by yourself. Yeah. And so even as like, I always brought other people in and taught them all the stuff. But you know, it's the music industry. Like, all right, good. Like I, I know how to do it now. Right. <laughs> and they, they pick up and go. Yeah, no. And so they, they went alone too. Like right. and so now everybody's alone. Yeah. You're going and, fast, but you're not going far. And that's that's the that's the thing with um, like what going back to what we were talking about, just this toxic positivity that you can do everything yourself. And so nobody has a real reliance on anybody else. Like 
Like I produce my own stuff. I record my own stuff. I shoot my own videos. And so like, then we don't respect the talents of anybody else. And everybody is kind of a lot. And I got everybody, but a lot of people are mediocre in mm-hmm. many things. Mm-hmm. And, and you can go on Spotify and see the cover art and like, come on, bro. Yeah. Like, you could at least went to Canva. Right. Like. <laughs> right. Right. So I think that's, that's the thing. Uh, and yeah, and multitasking is not a real thing, y'all. Um, I, I saw something the other day. I re- watched a, can't remember what Netflix series it was, but they talked about multitasking and mm-hmm. and how people believe that just because they're going from one thing to the next, which is only called task switching, you right. can switch tasks, but you cannot multitask. Not even computers can multitask. Yeah, I'm. I'm that's what I do. Yeah. Like I started programming, yeah. That's so funny because yeah. I was about to bring that up. Even a computer doesn't multitask. Do mm-hmm. it, it's so, yeah. That's, that's crazy. That and when you said that, you're like, yeah, I can do a lot of things, but like you said, you can do a lot of things, but you cannot do everything simultaneously at once. So you need a team, which brings us to the next thing: gather, building a team. Because a lot of people, um, I've even come across this um, using my discernment and finding the right people. Um, I've been in relationships technically with a lot of people because when you're dealing with business, it's still a relationship with a lot of people in this last year. And in the music industry, it's hard to find good, reliable, real, genuine people. Like you have to, how do you build your team? How do you find the right people? My, my thoughts have evolved on this. I think most artists look for a manager out the gate or an investor like they're looking there most times artists are looking to offload the the business part of their career to someone else. I think the the first person that artists should look for as a champion is a cheerleader, someone who believes in them. Whether it's an engineer, a producer, an assistant, someone who believes in their art. I think that that's more important and someone like even like when people joke about the homeboy manager, I was like, I'm good with that. I was like, if it's someone who genuinely believes that, yo, this person, because his voice has more validity to me than yours. Yeah. Like him, like, yo, you got to check him out. Da, 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 da. Like someone who can go hard for you, who, who, who can be uncompromising because they believe in you and allow you to still keep some objectivity and do certain things. Um, but I feel like that, that person, um, brings other people because if you got one believer, then I got to give you a second. Uh, you yeah. convince somebody. Yeah, you're going to convince somebody else. You know what I mean? Artists run around here and convince nobody. I do a, I hop on live and be like, yo, I play your music. Let me get five people in here. Tell that, tell me they want to hear your music. I play it right now. Right. Ah, crickets. <laughs> like, <Nobody. laughs> yeah. right. And so like that's the that's the thing is a lot of times people people don't have supporters. Support yeah. And so they they look for they want people to be fans. Mm-hmm. Everybody just to love their music and all this romanticize mm-hmm. what things are supposed to be. And it's like you haven't convinced one person in your circle to believe in. You, you don't have someone to record you when you're performing at an open mic. Like, how are you going to talk to me about managing? Mm. And that gets real sad real quick. And so that's, that's, the, that's the, the thing is, I feel like we end up, you're surrounded by people. Mm-hmm. And it's like making, um, for me, if you don't have anyone around you that supports you like that, then that lets me know what kind of work you've been doing. So your cousin has seen you hemming and hawing like over like, oh, man, I want to. And then not doing it. And then you out doing this. If I if anyone when you're consistently doing your thing, there it is. That your, word. Yeah. Consistency. Like your friends, your family, they see that. Mm-hmm. When they can see that you're consistent with yeah. something. That's that's where that belief in you starts. But a lot of people aren't consistent with anything. Oh, you know what? You just gave me mm. thought like because it's like. That second person to believe in you, because I was on that first person, the second person to believe in you comes after the first person to believe in you. Mm-hmm. And the first person to believe in you is supposed to be you. Mm-hmm. And that's where why pe- people have a hard time getting that second person because 
That's where the lack of consistency comes from. Ooh. No, you're right. Yeah. Because when you know, you, like, know you, you show up at work consistently. Right. Because you believe they're going to pay you, you on Friday. Pay, <laughs> you, you want that paycheck, you're going to show yeah, up. Yeah. You know. That's like, ain't no doubt. Like, yeah. Like, but when it comes to yourself. But if you find out that, like, yo, payroll was messed up last week and people start talking at the end, like, you, you, like, listen, I ain't going to, I'm about to go and right, find out what's going <laughs> yeah. right. on. Yeah. No, you're right. And I didn't even think about that either. But yeah, you have to be consistent with yourself and you're the first person to believe in you and everybody else thereafter. Wow. Your, your consistency is a measure of your self belief. So when you sit and, and you see anyone who's not consistent, it's because they don't believe in whatever they're they're working toward. So like you can't that's the whole thing with me with what we do with the magazine, because I love helping people. Like I've always, even when I was an artist, I always brought people up under my wing shop, taught them how to record, taught them the business, taught them everything. Like I've ever, and that's why I learned a lot of stuff is because I learned it through teaching. And so I've always helped people. And one of the things um, early on with the the magazine, I had to, I had to learn something new. Like um, I was an artist. I came down here. I saw artists way more talented than me, not making any money. So it was like, let me do something to help this situation. And, and then it was like, the thing is, like going back to like the analogy with the labels, talk about labels taking advantage of artists, artists take advantage of labels or anybody who they feel will help them in there. Like you do your event, you spend all the money, security, nobody asks, hey, did you, did everything no. add up? <laughs> like you need a little extra cause to pay security. Like as long as they perform, but let right. let them let you take a minute off they set time. <laughs> it's a whole fuss and fight and hooting and hollering. It's like you have no idea what you got to do to pull all that together in the first right. place. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. I definitely. And so, so in that, I had to create ways to insulate myself from the people who would take advantage of my kindness and my genuine desire to help yeah. people. And so that's kind of where like our subscription and the membership evolved from. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we're booking artists to perform during South by Southwest. We put them on major stages, fly them across the country. We got the $15,000 grant we about to do. Like yeah. all these things, these is like, and it's like people don't believe this stuff. And I used to be offended, but I was like, yo, this stuff is unbelievable. Like I, like I can understand that. Yeah, because you're willing to help somebody else for nothing. Yeah, well, not for nothing. You gotta be a subscriber. Remember, okay, I need yeah, to. Yeah. And so, and here's the thing: it ain't even that ain't even the money because it's like someone like it's artists who receive tens of thousands of dollars of services and all kind of opportunities and stuff who maybe invested like less than eight hundred dollars over the course of years. Mm. So it's not about the financial side of things. It's about the consistency, consistency. though. That $7 membership that they got back five years ago, they've paid it consistently every month. They post their updates consistently. They submit for stuff consistently. And it's like, but creating, creating this way for me, I can, like, I'm not going to listen to what you tell me. Words are cheap. Mm -hmm. Like, words rarely cost you anything. That again, and so I gotta look at what you actually do. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's, that's where it do. comes down to like yeah. that. Consider everybody gonna tell you, I really want to do anything for it. I was like, what was right. the last book you read about this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it. No, but seriously, people don't invest in their own self education. Right. They don't they don't educate themselves on what they need to do, what they want to do, where they want to go, and you're. Hey, look, so and I understand that subscription base. Mm -hmm. And so I've even been um, pondering some different ideas on doing things with subscriptions because I feel like even in these last two years, I've given, 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 but it's like, all right, who am I giving to? Is it actually going anywhere? Is it actually measuring up to anything to help, you know, the right person? Because you don't want to just keep giving of yourself and, you know, nothing yields from it. So, yeah. I get that. It, no, it's definitely, that that can be a difficult thing. It's like, um, when, when we do this stuff, you want to be a part of success. Yeah. You want to, like, I, it, and that's the, 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 one of the funny things. Like, when I first 
started it, it's it, what is it love don't cost a thing mm-hmm. it's like but it goes back to like even just human nature it's like the artist i find an artist who's amazing like and i know like yo i got a show for you i got i know someone who would invest into you i'm like yo get a membership get a subscription da, 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 da. and it's the fact that i'm taking the effort mm-hmm. it's like nah <laughs> And it's like, it reminded me, it's a comedian. I think it was Groucho Marx or someone was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a part of any club that would have me as a member. And it's like, it's that self-reflection of not believing in myself. If you believe in it, if you would have me as a, a member of this, it must not be good. <laughs> <laughs> it must not be good. And so like, that's the thing is, is like, so I look at how people move. Versus the things that they say. And that lets me know, like, all right, this is where I can invest time and effort into and also our resources. So basically, back to that question, where do you start? How do you break into the music industry? I think the, the main thing would be starting, the main starting point would be believing in yourself. Yeah, itself. That self-belief. Yeah. And, and being consistent with yourself and doing something, showing up for yourself consistently. Once you, once you do that, then... You start moving in a way that that is in in accordance, and then you are in the industry. Whether whether that's spending that hundred and fifty dollars to set up your LLC and get your bank account set up, setting up your your Shopify, then you start doing the things, and you're a part of the industry. Now your profitability goes from from there. Just <coughs> putting the plan together. Coming right back to the the top of the. Topic of the question is where you get your start, and I was saying that it's really believing in yourself, you know, being consistent with yourself, knowing that what you want to do is what you're gonna do, making that decision to just do it. Yeah, that's how just you get in the it. industry. <laughs> like you know, it's and this brings it all the way full circle. When I first started rapping, I was 16. I dropped my first project when I was 17. I used to go around selling. CDs and it was doing shows and stuff. And I always had people, yo, how you start a how you start a label? How you do this stuff? And I never had a good answer. I'm like, man, you just do it. And then they, you know, the little snarl look like, you know, you can tell me right. like you a hater. Like it was like, mm-hmm. and and it took me forever to realize that I was giving them like, and it seemed so generic. Nike, just do it. Right. Like, and I was like, yo, that's you really it. Answer. Like, that's it. There's just you wake up and decide and then you do it. Like if you, if there's no, there's no steps or processes to making the decision. It's like either you're going to do it or you're not. Right. And you're going to go out there and you're going to find answers or you're not. Yeah. Because I mean, there's no real book for this. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I think uh, this has been this has been good. Yeah, we talked about touched yeah. on a lot. Yeah. A lot of and answers. I think that's the thing is like all of it is related. So we had this one question, and then it kind of touches on these different things because a lot of stuff is mindset and and having a complete picture of of things. So what you got coming up? You want to let the people know about? Well, you know the next Indie Fresh concert is going to be coming up in March. I'm gonna drop that date soon, probably. I have another one. I'll give the exact date, but it's gonna be in March. New uh, new music gonna be dropping. I'm gonna be working with this, this one cool guy called the Mixed View. You know, but, um, I've heard of him. Yeah, well, yeah, he's been around. He's been. He's been around. Watch out for him. Yeah, no, Watch out. For him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. That will stay in. <laughs> yeah. So hey, you know, check us out. Check me out. Out on Instagram, it's Primrose as well. Check out any fresh concerts on Instagram, and uh, we're gonna be making it. All right.